One is operated by an out-of-state operator called Republic Schools based in Nashville, Tennessee. The other is operated by a local operator, uh, Midtown Charter Schools. And uh, charter schools are a new thing, aren't, aren't they, here in Mississippi? They're new to Mississippi, but they've been on the national scene in a variety of other states for, for years now. Um, what is the purpose of a charter school? The purpose is to provide an opportunity for children to have uh, an excellent educational experience by operating autonomously. Uh, that is, independently and on their own as much as possible, and to give them the freedom to employ techniques and standards that will ensure a quality educational experience for children. Okay, now the critics would say, well, what does that say about the quality of education in our state currently? Well, there are some districts based on the, the current grading scale. Districts in Mississippi are graded just like we were when we were in, in school, A, B, C, D, or F. And if you are in a D or F district, then those are the only applicants that can apply directly to us for a charter. And so if you are in a D or F district, uh, the concern is that you're not receiving the level of education that you could if you were in an A, B, or C district. And so the idea is to offer the charter school as an alternative in, the, in those districts that are D or F to afford those children a better opportunity. How many years have we seen these charter schools in Mississippi? Just one year. We just completed the first year for both charters and so we still do not have the results, testing results and scores back from, from that first year of, of, of the performance. So they are very new and it's, it's very much a startup. Um, if you haven't received those test results yet, when do you expect them? In the next several weeks, actually. We anticipate receiving them sometime early fall, and we will, should know them by that time. What are you looking for in those results? We're looking for um, compliance with the charter, the contract that we have in place with the charter school. And in that contract, there's an academic performance framework, and there are other requirements set forth in that contract. We're looking to make sure that the charter school has complied with every term of that contract, and hopefully we're going to see results from an academic standpoint that benefit the children in those schools. Are these uh, contracts, are they template contracts, or are they specific for the schools themselves? They're specific for the schools themselves. Now there are portions of the contracts that will be somewhat template because it would have to apply to any charter school. But there are other portions of it that are tailored specifically for the mission of that particular charter school. We're still looking good here. Okay. Um, let, let, let's talk about, if you could just give us the, the layman's terms. I know you're an attorney and, and, uh, and the contracts can be very uh, tricky to read. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of legalese in them, I'm sure. Uh, but can you just give us the, the layman's terms for what is required of a charter school? I mean, is it a whole list of things or is it a, a core set of requirements? Both. There's a core set of requirements and that basically is built around the academic performance framework that we require from charters. Then there are portions such as you have to have a transportation plan. You have to have some type of food plan. You have to have disciplinary procedures, things of that nature that have to be incorporated into the contract. So it really is a combination of core requirements plus uh, some detailed requirements. We, we've only had the, these two charter schools in Jackson for a year. You're waiting for the results of how those schools performed. 
based on the, the contracts that are made with, with, uh, with these two entities. Um, do you have any type of uh, gut feeling or early results or, or early, um, early reviews on, on how these schools have performed during the year? We do not have anything formal because the, uh, we, we, don't, we don't require anything formally during, that, during the year. Our performance review primarily takes place at the end of the year of the school year. But we do have informal processes in place where we check in uh, from time to time and, and see if there are any issues or anything along those lines. And based on the informal contacts that we've had, uh, we're confident that we're going to see some positive results. Now. I guess it would be unfair to compare two middle schools to the rest of the middle schools in Jackson Public Schools. However, just preliminarily, how much of a difference have you seen? Well, that's hard to say because as you point out, we haven't been in all of the other middle schools in Jackson. We've only been in the two middle schools that are our charter schools. I will say though that what we've observed in terms of the teaching methodology and the approach that's taken with the students, uh, it's very impressive in both charters. Uh, they're different, but both, both approaches seem to, seem to be effective when you go and you observe the classroom setting and see what's taking place. That sounds like the plan for, or, or, or the goal for it any public or any school I should say especially the public school because they're funded by taxpayer dollars but you would think that the schools would try their best to 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 live up to uh, academic standards even if they're not in a contract and what I'm talking about is, is the public schools themselves so again what does that say about charter versus public well I think that charters provide an opportunity for public schools in general to have a different educational experience to see if there is a better way of doing it. And if there is a better way or there are better methods that are working in the charter school, then why not export those to the other public schools in the district and let the rising tide lift all boats? I would hope that that would be one of the goals that we could pursue as a result of having public charter schools. Have you seen anything during this past school year that is a success with the charter school that you would like to implement it, uh, or pass along as a rec recommendation to, to the public school systems in the state? I think it's too early to tell on that. I think we're going to need several years of experience with a charter um, before we'll be able to say that definitively. We've got to remember, Mark, the, the law requires that there be a five-year contract with a charter school. And so this is, this is not a short-term type of deal. This is a five-year contract that we enter into with the charters. And so we will be able to review uh, over the course of a period of time to see what's working and what's not working. Uh, I met you for the first time at the last board meeting. Uh, I believe at that time there was some discussion about requests for additional charter schools. How, how many more are, are in line to, to get on board here in Mississippi? We currently, in, in this current review cycle, we have two pending applications for four charter schools. One application is for a high school uh, in Jackson Public Schools, and then the other application is for three middle schools. Uh, well, I say middle schools, really elementary, K through 8. And are those in Jackson? They're all in Jackson, yes. And the, the second applicant who's applying for the three elementary schools would start one school, I think, in the 17-18 school year, the second school the next school year, and the third year the next school year. Okay, so we have... Is that, that, that's a total of four new schools that are... Being that would be a total of four new schools, assuming that both of those applications are approved. We have the final phase of the process uh, is not completed yet, 
but we are in the final phase and that process will be completed in time for our next meeting in September. Are either of the two entities that operate the current charter schools that are middle schools in Jackson uh, one or both of the applicants? No. They're not? No. So these are new, new entities? These are two new entities, both out-of-state operators. Uh, who've operated, uh, one operator is based in New Orleans and the other operator has schools in Ohio and Indiana. And what is their track record for charter schools? Based on the information we've reviewed so far, and I understand we're not through final, the final phase of the process because the important, uh, an important phase of the process is a personal interview one-on-one -on -one that our evaluators will do with the, the operators of the district, of the school. But based on what we've reviewed so far, both operators have had successful schools in the locations where they've chosen to operate. Uh, you've probably heard the criticisms as well. These are out-of-state companies coming in here uh, to try to make money on the education system. What, what would you say to that? Well, they can't make money because they're prohibited by law from making money. The law requires that the operator be a nonprofit. But you've probably heard the same thing that I've heard. Well, I have, Mark, and that's why it's frustrating sometimes because that's not the law. <laughs> the law requires the operator be a nonprofit. So we would never approve an operator who's a for profit operator because it would violate the law and our job is to make sure that the applicants comply with the charter law as written and that's what we intend to do. Uh, there's also been uh, a lawsuit filed, I believe it was a Southern Poverty Law Center, about the funding mechanism that's correct. Uh, for the, the, the charter schools. Um, as an attorney, d does that argument hold any way is it valid? Uh, well, I'll, I've looked at the lawsuit, and I'm certainly not representing any of the parties, and so I'm not going to try to you know render an opinion on that. Uh, I believe that when the lawsuit works its way through, there are going to be some very strong arguments um, in defense of the the charter law as it's written in terms of the funding mechanism. Does that have any impact on the board that you oversee? It really has no impact on us directly, Mark, because we're going to require whatever funding formula the law sets forth. And so whatever funding formula is in the charter law is the funding formula that we're going to employ with each charter school. Now, obviously, if the funding formula uh, was found to be unconstitutional, that would have an effect on the charter schools, undoubtedly. Um, and so it, it will have more of an effect on the charter schools themselves and the parents and children of those charter schools than it will on the authorizer board. Do you have an opinion on it? Is, is the funding mechanism fair? Oh, I really don't have an opinion on that because that's really not our role as an authorizer board. Again, our role is to employ whatever funding mechanism the legislature provides, and our job is to make sure that that funding mechanism is the one that is enforced. As, as the person uh, kind of steering the ship for the future of charter schools in, in the state, um, what, are some, what are some things you have an eye on uh, on the radar, maybe some challenges that that you want to kind of head off at the pass before, uh, let's say, you know, just in hindsight, someone comes and um, uh, files a lawsuit about whatever. I mean, we, we just talked about a lawsuit about the funding mechanism. But are, are there any things, uh, any things that are uh, in the, in, you know, uh, in, in the view of the, of the board that might be future challenges when it comes to approving those charter schools? Well, first of all, you've given me far more credit than I'm due by indicating that I'd be the, the, the one who's blazing the trail for charters in Mississippi. Well, who is uh, that? There, there's a collective group. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, and, uh, but no, in all seriousness, uh, there are going to be, 
there are going to be challenges, Mark, as we go forward because we're plowing new ground. Charters are new in Mississippi. Uh, but we have the benefit of successful charter laws and operations all across the country that we're able to draw upon and we're able to look at. And so our goal as an authorizer board is to implement as many best practices as we possibly can, drawing from those best practices that have worked in other states. So it's going to be our goal to do that and to establish sound fundamentals for the operation of charter schools in the future. That's what we've tried to do in terms of setting up the application process and setting up the review process for applicants. And, and I believe we've been successful with that. And we've also strived to hold the charter applicants to the highest standards we possibly can. And, and I think we've been successful with that as well. There are some challenges down the road that we need to pay attention to. One thing we've seen is that, uh, first of all, there needs to be more information, accurate information, uh, shared with parents and the public about charter schools and what the law actually does allow and doesn't allow. Um, we're beyond the point of debating the policy about charter schools. They're here to stay. The law is in place. Um, and so we need to educate one another about, about what that law requires. I think we need, to, we need to think about how to become effective partners in the public education community with charter schools rather than trying to fight one another. Because our goal is to provide the best educational opportunities for our kids that we can and we should be about finding ways that we can partner to do that rather than fighting with one another and, and not providing the opportunity as a result of that that we could. Another thing we need to look at is we need to help, we, we need to provide educational opportunities for those who would want to operate charter schools and help them understand the application process and what they need to provide to us in order to prove that they have a good chance at success uh, in terms of educational opportunities. So there, there are a variety of things we can do, and I think that we need to, uh, we need to work diligently to educate one another about charters and to find ways that we can weave public charter schools into the fabric of our public education community in an effective way. Speaking of weaving into the fabric, as you know, there, there's been a lot of uh, resistance from people who are firm supporters of fully funding um, the MAEP formula and putting more emphasis in public schools. Why do you think that there has been so much, in your opinion, misinformation uh, about what charter schools do and what the law says, um, in your opinion? Well, I believe it, it, a lot of it revolves around funding because obviously what happens is when a charter opens in a public school district, per pupil funding uh, follows that student. And so the, the school district's budget is going to be reduced. Uh, as a result of that, and I have sat on a public school board, and so I know uh, the, the concerns that are there as a result of that. I think a lot of it has to do with that, um, and probably some of it too is just misinformation from other experiences in other states, things of that nature. Uh, so in the near future there could be, if approved by the board, uh, a total of six um, charter schools. But what does, the, what does the next five to 10 years look like for us uh, in this area? Do you, do you anticipate many more applications coming up for more uh, charter schools? And also, do you anticipate uh, applications for, for opening schools in more rural areas where there are other educational issues 
um, with, with some of the local school districts? I think we will see incremental growth. Um, Mark, I don't think you're going to see an influx of a lot of charter schools in the next five years, but I think you will see measured incremental growth. What's going to contribute to helping that is there was a change in the law this past session which allows students in C, D, or F districts to cross district lines in terms of attending charter schools. That will be helpful to some operators who otherwise would not have uh, considered coming to Mississippi or organically growing from Mississippi because of, of the district line issue, particularly in your, your smaller, more rural districts across the state. The law says that they can't, uh, that the company that is providing that charter school can't make money on it. But really, what's in it for the company itself to open the charter school if they can't make money from it? To provide a better educational experience for children who otherwise wouldn't have it. So it, it's more of a, a social responsibility, you see? I, certainly. Yes. Uh, what, what we've found, Mark, is so many of these operators, um, they're, they're in it for the right reasons. And they truly have a passion about educating children and providing an optimal educational experience for children. And, and they're serious about that. And, and it's, it's refreshing to see because, uh, and, and frankly, it's exciting because they are in it for the right reasons and they are working uh, feverishly to achieve that objective. And then let me go back to the public schools for a moment. It's a shame that that excitement and that responsibility can't transfer over to the way that the public school systems are run whether it's in Jackson or Gulfport or, or uh, you know, up in South Haven somewhere. I mean, well, you actually have that passion in some school districts in Mississippi. Oh, sure. And, and, I'm not saying yeah, that, and, that, and, that everything's dead. But. No, yeah, but you, you really have that in some areas, and, and some districts are really doing some exciting things in terms of educational opportunities. And, and to me, you know, Mark, that's what, that's what we should be about, is we should be about we're the public education community at large, and charters are now one, one tool in the toolbox. But, uh, you know, there are other opportunities out there with our traditional, char traditional public schools that, uh, that are working quite well. And uh, there may be some things that some charter operators want to look at in terms of what's working in Mississippi in some of those areas. So I think it can go both ways in terms of the relationship. Um, I'm going to get back to something else you said earlier in our conversation about uh, these companies have to apply. Uh, is there any cost to the company itself uh, to provide this service for, for, uh, for students in these areas where obviously uh, there needs to be, at least according to some people, um, other uh, opportunities, uh, other choices for, for their children's education. But what is, is, what's the cost associated with the company to provide that charter school? You're talking about dollar cost? Yeah. Is, is, uh, is there a dollar cost there? Well, I'm sure there are upfront expenditures yeah, sure. that they have to make because the way the funding mechanism works in our law is that the, the charter cannot receive its public funds until they come later in the school year. You know, so if you start in August, you, so your first year of operation, you have to be prepared to have some upfront expenditures and cost uh, that, that you will incur. Now, your, your funding kicks in later and you may make up for it, but you have to be prepared for those upfront costs as an operator. I'm just kind of painting a picture here, and I'm going to go down to one of the uh, charter schools in Jackson tomorrow and speak mm -hmm. to some people. Uh, is a charter school kind of between a private school and a public school? Is it kind of like in, in the in-between? 
No, I, I don't it's consider that. Completely different. Uh, it's another kind of public school. Okay. It, uh, if, if I were to uh, choose to send my son to a charter school, would I incur the kind of cost that I would associate with a private school? I really don't know uh, whether you would or not. Uh, and I, I can't speculate and venture because I've never uh, I never sent my children to private school, so I couldn't tell you. <laughs> Fair enough. You know, but what, 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 I'm, what I'm saying here is that uh, if the, 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 the cost that's associated to help educate one student can travel with that student from a public school to a charter school, does that cost cover everything for that child to be educated at a charter school? I don't know that it covers everything. Uh, you know, most schools have some type of, you know, fees that are associated with certain extracurricular oh, activities sure. or things of that nature. I'm talking about just your education. Yeah, but it's supposed to be enough to provide the fundamental education that the child is, is to receive, at least under our law. What else would you like to say? I'm going to wrap up here. What else would you like to say uh, or, or tell people about the charter school system? I mean, you've, you've said a lot about it. You've, you've described it uh, about having choices and better ed educational opportunities. But what would you like to say, you know, passionately or from your heart about charter schools? Two most important things that I think we need to pay attention to. Number one, uh, we need to hold charter applicants to the highest academic standards possible to ensure a high likelihood of success uh, in terms of their educational experience. We as an authorizer board are committed to that and we will continue to hold all applicants to those high standards because our kids deserve it. It's about giving our children another opportunity. The second thing that I would emphasize is we really need to find a way within the public education community to be effective partners and to work with one another and not against one another. That should be a primary goal of all of us who value public education and who want to see public education improve in our state. Well, then let me, let me just think of this question here, just based on what you just said. Do you feel like there are public educators, whether they're administrators or teachers or parents or whoever in the public school system that are working against charter schools? Well, I don't know if they're working against them or not, but I sure have encountered some resistance when I've spoken about public charter schools in, in that environment. Uh, and, and, and that's I can understand that, Mark, to a degree because they are new and I can see where some would, would be threatened by a new concept like this. But I think that as responsible educators and parents, we all need to try to find a way to see where the common ground is uh, that, that can benefit our kids.